The Big Ten is one of the strongest conferences in all of college football today, with teams always in contention for the college football playoff. Since the playoff's inception in 2014, they have only missed the playoff twice. The Big Ten Conference has combined for nearly 70 national titles in football and is the oldest conference in all of college football. And actually might have started the idea of a conference at the college football level. But had this happen, you won't want to miss this one. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm planning to release multiple videos a week during the college football season. Also, let me know which conference your favorite team plays in in the comment section below. The Big Ten is one of, if not the oldest college football conference in college football history. The conference's history dates back to 1896, was originally known as the Intercollegiate Conference of Faculty Representatives. The Big Ten Conference is so old that it actually predates the NCAA by nearly a decade. Due to the number of injuries occurring in college football and the growing criticism linked to said injuries, Purdue President James Henry Smart invited presidents from the University of Chicago, University of Illinois, Lake Forest College, University of Minnesota, Northwestern University and University of Wisconsin to a meeting in Chicago on January 11th, 1895 to create policies aimed at regulating intercollegiate athletics. The eligibility of student athletes was one of the main topics of discussion. The conference was formed in the second meeting months later. Due to Lake Forest College not being in attendance for the second meeting, Michigan was invited instead. The original charter members are believed to be Purdue, Wisconsin, Chicago, Michigan, Minnesota, Northwestern, and Illinois, with the conference being more commonly referred to as the Western Conference. The Western Conference predated the creation of the NCAA and was one of the first conferences to sponsor college basketball, with the first reference to the conference as the Big Nine was in 1899 after Iowa and Indiana had joined. Nebraska first petitioned to join the league in 1900 and again in 1911 but was rejected both times. In April of 1907, Michigan was voted out of the conference for refusing to adhere to league rules limiting football teams to no more than five games and players to three years of eligibility. Ohio State joined in 1912 and Michigan returned in 1916 and the Big Ten was created. The conference dropped down to nine teams again when the University of Chicago decided to abolish football in 1939 and they withdrew from the conference in 1946. The small university of just more than 16,000 students won 73 conference titles in various sports as a member school. It was believed that one of several schools, notably Iowa State, Marquette, Michigan State, Nebraska, Notre Dame, and Pittsburgh would replace Chicago at the time. Michigan State had sought to join the Big Ten back in 1924, but would not prevail at first. They found a lot of football success during the 1930s, going 7-1 in 32, 8-1 in 34, 6-2 in 35, 6-1-2-36, and 8-2-37, and 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 but received little respect or attention. President John Hanna felt like they needed a way to schedule tougher opponents and wanted to have the opportunity to play said schools at home. Prior to 1947, for example, 29 of Michigan State's 33 varsity games against the University of Michigan took place in Ann Arbor. The logical way to upgrade the quality of the Spartans' opponents was for the school to join the Big Ten but the conference was full and did not seem disposed to adding another team. The Detroit News wrote, If any college is qualified for membership in the Western Conference, it is Michigan State. Under the direction of President John A. Hanna, the college has grown into one of the country's most important educational institutions and one of the most progressive. Athletically, Michigan is on par with the majority of Western Conference members. The college is located in the Western Conference territory. There is no sound reason for withholding an invitation to join. Hanna used this column and wrote every Big Ten school and got favorable responses from everyone, including Michigan. When Chicago left, they felt that Michigan State was the best choice to replace them and endorse them. Even sports writers agreed that Michigan State was the right choice too. But Michigan's opinion on having their in-state rival join the conference had changed, and they now opposed the idea. Officials from the University of Illinois and Indiana University also expressed apprehension, fearing that an annual Michigan State College versus Michigan Big Ten rivalry would diminish their profitable and prestigious annual games against the Wolverines. 
Iowa wanted to add Nebraska to create a regional rival, but also liked the idea of adding Michigan State to dilute Michigan's dominance, creating a more balanced sports conference. Hannah's relationship with Minnesota President Lewis Morrill helped change the sentiment, and eventually Michigan State would receive the invite, becoming the new 10th member in the conference. The conference did not officially change their name to the Big Ten in 1987, being referred to as the Intercollegiate Conference of Faculty Representatives until then. Ironically, almost as soon as they changed their name to the Big Ten, they would look to add their 11th member in Penn State, who was an independent in football at the time and played all their other sports in the Atlantic Ten Conference. The addition of Penn State was controversial for all the other Big Ten members and lacked transparency for the athletic directors. Former Big Ten Commissioner Jim Delaney told The Athletic, The way we did it, I probably would have graded it as an F. So you have an A outcome with an F execution. In 1980, when Penn State played Ohio State in the Fiesta Bowl, Big Ten Commissioner at the time, Wayne Duke, made a stop in Phoenix on his way to the Rose Bowl to have a conversation with Penn State's president, John Oswald, and coach Joe Paterno, and found there was mutual interest in a path for Big Ten membership. At the time, though, Paterno preferred an all-sports Eastern Conference, but he was rebuffed in the ensuing years. The Big East, focused on basketball, also rejected Penn State. In 1989, Penn State President Bryce Jordan called Illinois President Stan Eikenberry to gauge their interest in having them join the Big Ten, not thinking Joe Pa would be around forever. The Big Ten was a provincial Midwest Conference. All ten of its schools were members of the Association of American Universities, a prestigious research consortium. Any potential addition required elite academics and athletic credentials to merit Big Ten consideration. Penn State had joined the AAU in 1958 and was a football powerhouse at the time, winning two national titles in the 80s. Eikenberry secretly talked to the other Big Ten presidents about the idea of adding Penn State, and they all seemed to be in favor of it. Jim Delaney took over for Duke in 1989 and held a two-day retreat that December in Chicago to bring together the old and the new. The presidents wanted to go about adding Penn State their own way and Delaney played in towards the presidents. Leadership took an informal poll. It came out 9-0 in favor of inviting Penn State with one president absent. No athletic director or athletic official was aware of the vote and Eikenberry called Penn State to inform them of the news. Things were supposed to remain confidential until the formal vote took place later that week. Instead, all hell broke loose. Within four days of the confidential vote, word leaked beyond the Council of Ten and the league office. The Chicago Tribune broke the story. Friday afternoon, the athletic directors were informed that Penn State was joining the conference. Jim Delaney gathered his ten athletic directors onto a conference call for the Big Ten announcement. Gentlemen, at 3 p.m. we are making an announcement that Penn State is joining the Big Ten. The stunned 80s sat slack-jawed, unable to speak, until Michigan's Bo Schembechler broke the silence. You gotta be shitting me. Schembechler ripped the presidents apart to the media saying, This confirms the worst fears I have of presidents getting too much control in athletics. Making decisions that without ever studying it is terrible. Not one athletic director was consulted on this matter. Writers ripped apart the conference concerns about the travel time for student-athletes. Ironic, right? Because we're still talking about it today. The Big Ten would not expand again in 2010 when they added Nebraska, and in 2014 they added Rutgers and Maryland to move to 14 teams. Ironically, at one point, the Big Ten had 12 teams and the Big 12 had 10 teams. The Big Ten chose to keep their name because of the name recognition it carried. In the early 2010s, the Big Ten chose to split the conferences into divisions, naming them the Leaders and the Legends, instead of going the regional direction arrangement. In the Legends division were Iowa, Michigan, Michigan State, Minnesota, Nebraska, and Northwestern. The Leaders division was composed of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio State, Penn State, Purdue, and Wisconsin. Conference officials stated they had focused on creating competitive fairness rather than splitting by geographic location. However, the new Legends and Leaders divisions were not met with enthusiasm. Some traditional rivalries, including Ohio State and Michigan, were placed in separate divisions. In 2014, they moved to the East-West division setup we now know today. June of 2022, it was announced that USC and UCLA would be joining the Big Ten in 2024, and earlier this year it was also announced that Oregon and Washington would be joining them as well. 
The Big Ten is going to have 18 teams in 2024 and signed a new media rights deal with CBS, Fox, and NBC, totaling an estimate $7 billion. When the West Coast teams join the conference, we will see the elimination of the East-West divisions. The Big Ten is one of the strongest FBS conferences in the nation with 53 national titles with the current members and 67 national titles with the new members come 2024. Michigan has the most conference championships with 44, followed by Ohio State with 39, Minnesota with 18, Illinois with 15, and Wisconsin with 14. They also have a lot of success in other sports, especially women's volleyball, men's basketball, and women's and men's hockey. The Big Ten will always have a special place in my heart. Being a Wisconsin Badger, it will always be my favorite conference in college football. What do you think? Which conference is your favorite team playing? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching and as always, remember to embrace the grind.